Hey everybody, World War Guy here today, and today we are going to look at what a Belgian soldier would have worn during the 18 days campaign from May 10th to May 28th, 1940. Now before we begin, this uniform is dedicated to my great-grandfather, Jean-Léon de Fosse, who was part of the 1st Light Infantry Regiment. I would say based on, but I do not know his exact rank, and I do not know exactly which gear and weapon he was issued. He did fight during the 18-day campaign and was captured by the end of it, where he was sent to Stalag 1A, where he remained a prisoner until he was liberated by the Soviets in 1945. And before we begin, this impression is far from complete, and I do plan on making a new video once it is complete. With that being said, let's start with a short historical background of the Belgian Army and of the 1st Light Infantry Regiment during the campaign. The Belgian army was ill-prepared for a German invasion as it possessed around 200 combat vehicles and three aircraft regiments, many of which were obsolete compared to the German planes and armored vehicles. The Belgian army utilized their combat vehicles as support for infantry, artillery, and cavalry units rather than their own dedicated units such as what the Germans did. This was because Belgium prepared its armed forces as a defense force and not an attack force. The Belgian army did possess around 650,000 soldiers, nearly 20% of the total male population at the time, but did, this did not help them as the army was outdated and issued many outdated vehicles, aircrafts, weaponry, etc. When the Belgian army prepared for a possible German invasion, they fortified their defenses at the Albert Canal, where the 1st Light Infantry Regiment was stationed at, and the KW Defense Line. Their goal was to slow down the advancing German army while the British and French would enter Belgium to aid in the defense. Although this did help slow the Germans down, it was not enough to stop them. For many reasons, one is that Belgium wanted to maintain its neutrality and therefore did not allow French or British troops to enter the country until German soldiers had crossed the border, delaying the Allied armies to support an effective defense. As the Germans invaded the country on May 10, 1940, they quickly arrived at the Albert Canal, meaning little resistance. Fort Eben Emael, considered to be the strongest fort in the world at that time, was taken by about 78 Fashemjäger within a day. This ended up being a blow to B Belgian morale. By the 18th, the German army captured Antwerp, breaking the Belgian lines. And by the 27th, the Belgian army was pushed back to about 31 miles from the coast. The German army quickly began to surround them, and the next day, on the 28th, the Belgian army was ordered to surrender. By the end of the war, the Belgian army had lost nearly 6,000 dead and around 15,850 were wounded. About 30% or 220,000 soldiers were sent to prison camps. The majority of Flemish soldiers were repatriated as they were seen as Germanic people of Europe, while the French speakers were forced to prison camps until the end of the war. To start off with the impression, we will look at what clothes a soldier would wear. Here I am wearing a bonnet de police or side cap with yellow trim and green tassel, denoting I am part of a light infantry regiment. On this particular cap, it has the number 12, denoting the 12th regiment. Normally this would be a 1 as I portray the 1st light infantry regiment, but this cap is an original and I don't want to modify it. A soldier would wear a civilian shirt under their M35 field jacket. On the collar of the jacket, two collar tabs are present. The yellow and green color would denote that I am part of a light infantry regiment. A soldier would wear a pair of M35 trousers. For footwear, I am wearing a pair of the French model 1912-16 boots. The Belgian boots were made similarly, but the leather would be more smooth, the toe would be a bit more round, and there would only be six eyelets instead of the seven present here. Despite these differences, it is still accurate as it is possible to see a wide variety of boots. Over the trousers and boots, I am wearing a pair of lace-up leather leggings. These have been issued since before the First World War. The Belgian army used the M31 Adrian helmet as their primary helmet, but as I explained, the army was very outdated and the M15 helmet, which was first used in World War I, was still very popular for many soldiers. Sometimes both helmets were seen in the same unit, even in the same squad. Either would be correct for a Belgian impression at this time. Looking at the equipment, we will start with the Model 30 haversack. This haversack would hold all of your extra clothes, hygiene kit, and other necessities. On the top, you would hold a standard issued blanket and a shelter half, which unfortunately I do not have yet. The haversack would have leather shoulder straps which would also connect to the ammo pouches to help with support. 
A mess kit would be strapped to the front using one or two leather or canvas straps, one vertical, one horizontal. I am wearing the standard issued leather belt. Like the Germans, this belt was used for the equipment and for walking out uniform. On my left side, I have one ammo pouch. This is a Turkish model pouch, but they're very similar to the World War I German ammo pouch, which in turn was issued to some degree to Belgian soldiers, even by 1940. Moving to the rear, I have an M34 gas mask bag with an M29 gas mask inside. The bag would be slung over the shoulder, and a metal clasp would hook onto the belt. Behind the bag, there is the Model 16-35 bayonet held by the standard leather frog. And normally, I would have a shovel and cover in which the bayonet was sitting, similarly to the German style. Continuing to the right side, there is the Model 30 bread bag. This bread bag would normally hold a pocket knife, fork, spoon, and hygiene kit. But since this is a large bag, quite larger than the typical German bread bag, I'm sure soldiers would put more personal gear inside. On the outside, there's room for two canteens, but soldiers are normally given just one, unless their job required it, such as a medic. Now the canteen, I'm unsure of the model number, because by 1934, there were nine different canteen styles. Now, of course, many of these were small differences, such as a flat bottom, canteen or a round bottom canteen. The canteen is the same as issued during the First World War with some minor differences. And the last piece of equipment is the second ammo pouch. These pouches held five round stripper clips of the 765 by 53 ammunition. Now normally the bullets would be round nose instead of spitzer and this was due to the vast amount of model 89 rifles that are still in use. These rifles could only take round nose ammunition so to keep logistics from becoming a nightmare, all soldiers were issued round nose ammunition, even if they had a modern rifle that could take Spitzer rounds. As for the rifle I'm using for this impression, I had the Model 89-36 rifle, which was first developed in 1936 by converting old M89 rifles and modernizing them. If you're curious about the rifle, I made a separate video talking about the history and use of the rifle, and I highly recommend you check it out. And with that, we come to the end of the impression video. Of course, there are still many items that I'm missing, such as a great coat, shelter, half, shovel, carrier, and many personal items. I will post a separate video showing my personal items very soon, so please stay tuned for that. Now, I know my impression is far from complete and may still have a lot of inaccuracies, but please, please, please feel free to correct me as I still have a lot to learn from this impression. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it interesting, educational, anything like that. If you did, please drop a like, write a comment, share, and subscribe. But besides that, you guys have a great day.